read, you know, from the news. Um, the situation, from what I understand, that I did not understand uh, is the fact that uh, at first, what the Italian newspapers and some of this that I have said about her is that she came home and at first her boyfriend was her alibi and that they were with each other all night. Then that story changed. She came home that morning or whatever and went into the bathroom and, and she saw blood, but she Her story that. about that never changed. Okay. And the blood she saw were two individual drops. Okay. Did you see the movie? No, I did okay. not see the movie. They showed a splash of blood that looked like somebody had been slaughtered. She saw a drop of blood in the bidet. Mm -hmm. she, draw, she saw a drop of blood on the chrome part of the sink. Mm -hmm. she, they were not large blobs of blood. Mm -hmm. And simply she thought that it was, there was another reason for it. Mm -hmm. If you see two drops of blood in your house mm -hmm. uh, coming home, my guess is that you're not going to run out screaming. You'll be curious. I would be curious. I would be curious. Which is why she called her boyfriend and said, I found two drops of blood in the house. See, I wouldn't call my boyfriend. I would go through my house. That would be my first instinct. I would start going through my house wondering where did the drops of blood come from. She did. Okay. She did, and she found a broken window, called her boyfriend. He said, come back to my house. Come back. Why wouldn't she call the police? Yeah. They did call the police as but soon as they got there. Okay. As soon as who got there? As soon as she and her boyfriend came back, they called the police. Okay. So she left the house, went to the boyfriend's house, and then they called the police. They came back. She wanted to show him the broken window. Okay. All right. Um, okay. I guess m uh, my, uh, my other problem with this is where are they saying that she's lying? Because when, when they were interrogating her, and I understand interrogation is a terrible thing. So if they're interrogating her, and at one point she gets to, and this is what's so real to me, if somebody, if someone puts their hands over their ears or over their head, and they said, I could hear him killing her, and if they're teenagers, you know, I'm a mother, and kids tend to do things when they're with other kids that they normally wouldn't do. Um, I understand that, you know, they're, they're good kids and they can fall in with a bad crowd. If she's under the influence of wanting to impress her boyfriend or be with her boyfriend, and if these two men were, uh, uh, I don't know, taunting this other woman because she wasn't into what these kids were doing, um, and if she's going along with it and she's not saying anything, I guess the big problem was, was she there or not there? She was not there. She, that within several hours after getting food in her system, she wrote back to the police and said, I didn't know what was real. I didn't know what wasn't real. I was confused. I was not in the house. You coerced me into this statement, and I felt brainwashed. Now, obviously, you believe she's guilty. Okay, not, not that she killed this young woman. I don't believe she killed the young woman. All right. What I do believe, and it's just my feeling, and, mm -hmm. and I don't want to see anybody go to prison for something they didn't do. Mm -hmm. I'm a black woman. Mm -hmm. Believe me, I know the, then the you problem would understand <laughs> the prejudice of, that she went right. through as an American in an Italian anti-American town. And, and, and so with that being said, once again, my, my problem is it's a hard statement to swallow that she wasn't there at all. And the paper said then her boyfriend threw her under the bus because at first the story was... Same type of, same type of interrogation. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> okay. Do you think it's possible in an interrogation to get somebody to say what you want rather than what's true. If they're on drugs, no, maybe. No, I didn't ask you that. It, do you believe that if I had you in an interrogation room long enough under the right conditions, I could get you to say anything I want? Me? You. No. Wrong. No. You're wrong. You are, you are not understanding how an interrogation works. And that's okay, because I'm still going to disagree with you, which is why I'm me. And that's what I'm talking about. If I didn't do something, and I don't believe she killed her, I don't, I, I'm just having a problem with 
her not being there. And if they were in the room, whatever went on, there was one story where the kids were drinking, there was drugs involved. Except that the drug test on her the next day said she hadn't taken drugs. Which one, Amanda or Amanda? Amanda. Okay, all right. And Mez had not taken any drugs. Okay. And, and Raphael had not taken any drugs. They the had boyfriend. smoked a joint. Okay. But right. unless you were in reefer madness, that there you go. Yeah, joints don't do that. Joint do don't do that. <laughs> so, so let's take let's take drugs out of it. Okay, didn't happen. Okay, let's take wild alcohol out of it. Didn't happen. So now you've got sober kids. Okay. So, sober kids who were uh, were they into uh, it was Halloween. This Halloween party, Day after correct? Halloween. Okay, and they were uh, in. I thought that there was a video that Meredith had been involved in that they were saying that she was in the production. You said that's a fabrication. Never that's heard not of it. true. Okay. Never heard of it. Um, and that's how she met this other gentleman, Rudy, or the guy. She that never met Rudy before he killed her. Okay. Well, I, she knew who he was, but she had never talked before he killed her. Okay. All He's right. a burglar. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to comment about uh, breaking somebody's will. I mean, it, it does happen. You have people in this country who confess to crimes. Uh, and uh, you discover later on that it just wasn't true. Their you admissions. overcome their will. You overcome their will, and, and they, for a lot of reasons. That, you know, and, uh, certainly if, if, if the conditions that, that you uh, have uh, uh, described, I mean, that certainly is going to bring a lot of cause for someone to, to admit to something or say something they don't really intend right. to say. That happens. So. Thanks. Well, and, and, okay, I'm still going with, I don't believe she killed her, but the way the media has painted this story exactly. was that exactly. that Mez was in the room somebody at one point and this is a wild shot that they were holding her down so they accused Amanda or somebody of of holding her hands and right. and, and and the other okay. guy was Let sodomizing her and <laughs> raping her <laughs> she was not sodomized okay so she was not sodomized and she <laughs> was not raped okay she was sexually assaulted but she was not raped okay i've i've seen the autopsy picture pictures, I've seen the crime pictures. The room where this happened is not much bigger than this square couch. Okay. She bled uh, two liters of blood and it sprayed on walls. Rudy Gaudet had footprints all over the floor. It was, uh, it was a linoleum floor. Footprints all over the floor. In his, in his shoes, he had bloody handprints on the wall. He had uh, handprints on her purse where he took the money. Uh, his DNA was inside of Meredith. His, he was all over that room. There is not one speck of evidence to show that Amanda was in that room. There is not a single bit of clothes of hers that are missing. There is not a single bit of clothes of hers that had any blood on them, any shoes, nothing. She was not in the room. Was she in the apartment? No, she was not in the apartment. She was with her boyfriend at their house, at his house. Didn't the boyfriend change his story? Yes, and I'm going back to the fact that he was interrogated the same way. This is terrible. I, got, I can tell you that I, have, I got one guy to confess in 10 hours to a crime that he knew he would go to prison for for 15 years if he told me, and I had no evidence against him. And in 10 hours of sitting there, ha I had three meals with him, 10 cigarettes, and he confessed to me to a, to a federal 15-year crime. Now, he did it, but you give me five days and any technique I want, I could have had him... I could have had him confessing to any crime I wanted. But you just said he did it. So th th I'm saying to any crime I wanted to. I could have chosen a but crime. You said, but you're saying he really did it. Mm -hmm. So to me, that, that's a difference. And that's a totally different mindset because you also have to take into consideration, I'm not a 21-year-old girl. Yeah, but so he was a hardened criminal. <laughs> he was a hardened criminal. If you can break him, what can you do to a 20-year-old girl in a different language, in a different country, who's scared to death, never been in trouble in her life, and they're telling her, She's going to prison for 30 years, never going to speak to your mom again unless you tell us what we want to hear. And when she said no, they slapped her in the head. Now, I didn't see the movie, once again, so you, you've got a fresh person here. The um, movie, you don't need to see the movie. The movie had nothing to do with reality. Okay. Well, <laughs> so <laughs> no, here, <laughs> that's the case. <laughs> so who, who was this person? And Judge Diaz also helped me with this because I'm wondering, who was her 
council where she walked into an Italian courtroom and in the stuff that I've been reading about Amanda, they're saying that she was giving chocolates to her boyfriend and